anyway. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Marilyn Harris here of Hard at Work, and uh, I'm on another podcast series uh, called Creating Your Impactful Legacy. And on the call today, I have Mila DeChant. We were just kind of laughing because I remember trying to pronounce somebody's name, Michaela. I couldn't get it going for the life of me. Finally, one day it just clicked. So anyway, welcome, Mila. I am so glad that you joined uh, me today on our call. And um, so welcome. And um, thank you. I enjoy a uh, great conversation. I'm sure we will. But anyway, <laughs> so we would like to talk about workplaces, issues. And of course, now we've got the greater other things that are going on in this world right now. And um, so those are also important. But um, it's just like, how do we address all of them? There's almost so much we can all do, but we all can do something. So um, tell us a little bit, Mila, how you got started going, doing what you're doing, um, your company, and why did you decide to it? I read your story on your website, but for those people that haven't been there yet, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you got going. Sure. So. First of all, uh, thank you for having me, Marilyn. It, it's always a great pleasure speaking and sharing spaces with someone <laughs> who is always doing impactful things in the world and you fit the zone in kindness. So thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Well, I started, my company's name is Chief of Heart. Right. It's a culture science company. And I started my company back in 2018 after experiencing a very toxic uh, environment. I was part of a Fortune 500 company and I was there for three years and out of those three years for two and a half years I experienced very toxic dehumanizing demonizing um, treatment from my managers and it, it was not a one-off thing it was a daily thing and when I pushed back in terms of questioning, respectfully disagreeing, or respectfully questioning, they retaliated in different ways. And retaliation came in the form of dismissive narratives or mm. oppressing narratives where they would say, you're a foreigner, you can't speak English, mm. you can't do anything right, you can't take directions, despite me launching global programs and projects and saving the company half a million dollars and the the way that they treated me the way that they created the whole environment to to fight to be against me was just too toxic and i was yelled at every single day i <laughs> you know i didn't know uh, when the next yell was going to come from where it was going to come from in what format it was going to come from i didn't know if it was going to be in person via a text message or via an email and I just couldn't take it anymore, you know, like listening to negative narratives, to the treatments. I was ostracized. I was isolated. Every time I would reach out to someone, I was even told by my managers, I was threatened not to reach out to anyone. If I spoke to anyone else, I would, I would see the repercussions. Wow. And to a point where I, my identity kind of corroded my my confidence corroded. Mm -hmm. I actually stood on top of a building ready to commit suicide in 2018 because the, the life told to me became my reality. Mm -hmm. And as I was about to jump Maryland, I heard a voice. I didn't know where this voice came from. Mm -hmm. uh, it said, stop. There's no one around, Maryland. Yeah. No one around. Mm -hmm. And that was the defining moment for me to wake up and to say, no, I'm going to push back. Mm -hmm. So I pushed back in terms of still reaching out to other people. I went to HR. HR didn't want to help me. They said the problem was with me, not with my HR managers, not with my managers. Right. And what I did was, despite them taking away my project, I still launched all the projects to a point where top leadership was seeing what I did. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I launched projects globally for APAC, for EMEA, for North America, for South America, and saved the company half a million dollars. And I tended it in my resignation because I felt that it was not worth it climbing up, climbing up 
a steep mountain with 10 rocks in front of me pushing. I just didn't feel it. And I walked away and I stopped at my company called called Chief of Hearts, very focused on culture science, where I helped different organizations build a scale of a sustainable evolving culture that focuses on diversity as the root that helps organizations catapult to unlimited potential. Right. So that's my story. That's why <laughs> I created my company. And and I always went back. Like, my background is in engineering, human conditioning. Right. But in every facet of my career, I always went back to creating a conducive culture for people in creating great programs for people, great strategy where it attracted people, it kept people and it elevated people. And I thought to myself, I've been doing this for 15 over years. Why not right. just start my company? So yeah. there I am. And here yeah. I am today. <laughs> for sure. I mean, like, um, why not? I mean, you've been doing it for so long. Why don't you build it for yourself rather than for somebody else who doesn't appreciate it anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go, go find people that do appreciate you and want to work with you versus the other way around, you know? Yeah, so often we have to do that, but we don't see it until we just say, okay, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm moving <Right>. on. Right. <laughs> and, and those are the moments, right, where it pushes you to the limit. Those are the defining moments where, where I feel that the universe tells you, hey, yeah. it, you, you, it's not like you have to quit. It's, it's, not, it's not a dead end, right? Yeah. You, you are a unique individual who can find solutions you have the potential to find solutions. So the universe gives you signs and the signs can be the fact where people are pushing you to the point where you feel like giving up or you want to give up. Right. So it, ultimately the key is in our hands, but it's just we need that push, like that voice that I had. Mm-hmm. Like the voice is hit, the voice, and the voice, like the voice said stop. Yeah. Right. And, and, it can come in many different forms, but it came in that form for me. Right. And that was the I, defining moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it came to me too. When I started on this venture about kindness, you know, it's right. It, it came to me too. It's just like, because, you know, at that time I was just like, okay, I give up, you know, I don't know what to do anymore. And I won't share my whole story, but anyway, it's just like, like you were saying, it comes to you and through your voice is, but you have to pay right. attention. You have to be willing to pay attention because if you're not at that very edge where you've already surrendered or you've given up, if you're not willing to listen to that tiny voice inside who's been trying to and screaming at you for a long time, but you haven't been paying attention. So times till you physically do something like I'm going to jump off this bridge. I'm so glad you didn't, but you, that's what point you get to, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And and we always need to fight through. We always need to fight through. And that's that's the problem with with a lot of places, right? Workplaces where mm-hmm. where the concept of how, worth, right? Like how much are you worth? Are you really worthy? These right. narratives come in the form of or like pay, right? Mm-hmm. Pay equity, like giving you you in like unequal pay. Mm-hmm. Right. women are paid lesser than men or colored women are paid lesser than white women and right. white men right these are the forms are all forms and and places i feel that it's a policy too put in place to kind of like gauge your worth and to really prevent you from becoming worthy right and, but we have to fight through all of that if we don't speak up or say something or act on something mm-hmm. then it, those narratives, those toxic narratives, toxic behavior is become dominant negative behaviors. And that is what is happening right now. But, but we, through kindness, through empathy, through heart for leadership, we can change mm-hmm. a lot of them. Right, right. And because like you were saying, they're all um, functions or a- activities or things that they want to keep, whether it's women down, colored women down, colored people down. Mm-hmm. you know, whatever, it, they have all these, you know, it's the old ba- old man's network or old boy's network, right? It's all, <laughs> yeah. it's all really a lot of them. And it's not to say that white people don't go through the same crap, but it's, it's just more noticeable 
mm -hmm. when you're black or you're colored or if you're not white, right? Mm -hmm. Not to say, um, well, I don't want to get into the big political things of everything, but you know what I mean? It's just sort of like, yeah. so, but I really here want to talk about you and what you're up mm -hmm. to these days and what kind mm -hmm. of things that you're finding that your clients are now facing about, um, you know, what's going on because, you know, we have the virus and then we have the uh, other eruptions going on, you know, and they're important. So how do your clients, um, feeling or how do they what are some of the objections they come up with so a, a lot of them well right now due to the current landscape right, right. Uh, i've been getting a lot of of asked about oh we need to build diversity and and my first question is are you creating this program as a pr stunt yeah or are you truly wanting to create diversity right because there's a difference between being inclusive conscious inclusion and exclusive inclusion mm -hmm. and this and and the kind of acts that are, i see a lot is being exclusive inclusion in the name of pr because right. they want to 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 protect their brand right so whilst i hear a lot of clients that ask hey we need to have diversity program we we just need you to tell us what to do or tell us tell us if we are on the right path right. but again my follow-up question is are you really wanting to to implement diversity because if you just want me to take a look and agree with you that's not what i'm here to do yeah because for me for me is that even though i'm a culture scientist a lot of my clients treat me as that i'm a consultant mm -hmm. and that's the difference that's the difference that i'm here to break that that status quo as to i'm not a consultant who's going to going to agree with you right because i'm i'm a culture scientist i've done research i am doing research current research to tell you this is the strategy that we must be doing right. so once i hear a lot of clients say hey we need your help but at the same time we need your help according to how we want you to help. Right. So that's the first narrative that I try to dismiss. Yeah. <laughs> dismantle, yeah. right? It, it's it's like saying, "Hey, I'm 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 drowning, but I want you to help me. But I want you to help me by you jumping in and going underwater and lifting me up on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's like you like you, if you need help, you need to be open. So that's what I'm hearing a lot nowadays. Yeah. But on the other hand, that are a lot of clients who are willing to say hey we have been doing diversity wrong all along because to most people diversity is just race and gender right right and and most people do not have the education or exposure to really understand what diversity is it's not about redefining what diversity is right the meaning of the word but it's about redefining diversity in a form of making other people understand what it is. We need to start understanding what it is as opposed to telling people diversity is X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. Or it's like saying cake can only be made with flour, sugar, <laughs> and milk. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, Brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> white flour. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 mm, that including like there are so many variables and we need to start thinking about variables as opposed to like adopting cookie cuts at things that is not has not been working for the past five years that's not been working for the past 10 years yeah um so that's where i go in and tell my clients hey i am not a consultant i'm a culture scientist i'm here as a success partner to help you right uh let's let's move forward together as opposed to let's move on when you say let's move on, then then we're not willing to learn and we're not willing to embrace change. <laughs> right, right. I mean, because really that's what you're inspiring people to do is change, mm -hmm. right? And, right. Um, and there's old adage saying that people don't normally like to change, I guess. But like, again, if they're forced to that situation where they have to change, then they will. So, yeah. So have, have you had any other s stories or examples of successful uh, client relationships you've had um, or stories that you could share that you'd like to provide? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I, I have worked with many organizations where um, people do come and, and willing to or are willing to learn about what change is, right? right. Or what hot culture is. Right. Because one of the pillars of my company is hot shit. Right. And hot shit is about truly understanding, truly valuing your people as a, as a human being, mm-hmm. right? Truly seeing them as to how they exist in life. How they exist in life, not just from a one-prong perspective, but from a three-prong perspective. And what does that three-prong perspective look like? Home, society, and at the workplace. Right. So I have had, I've helped uh, clients who, who want me to come in and, you know, take a look at the whole organization and, and create strategies as to how can we move, how can we integrate diversity? Right. Or how can we integrate hot culture into mm-hmm. the whole organization? Right. Because when we truly focus on that, we will truly realize that diversity isn't an isolated team. It's actually an integral part of everything. It's right. integral to a point where diversity is present in finances, in operations, in mm-hmm. people, in hiring, mm-hmm. right, in progression, in every single part, in in uh, in your software development team, your STEM de- uh, department, even people who are the janitor of a company, right? Mm-hmm. It all includes into that from way at the bottom to way at the top. Diversity is not inclusive. Right, sorry, diversity is not exclusive. It is inclusive of right. everyone and every facet of the organization. So, so this part is who are embracing, you know, how to change the whole paradigm, shift the whole paradigm, adopt a new paradigm, are willing to adopt those those frameworks that I, I create, like strategies and mm. implement in your organization. And they have seen retention rates go up they have seen progression rates go up right. so, i'm not the typical person who goes in and, and says okay this is what we need to do this is what performance review is this is what productivity is i'm the kind of person who goes in and say performance review should be thrown out of the window because performance review are for robots you can't really say hey you're not performing you are performing we need to rethink as to what are the variables impacting our humans mm-hmm. if we're not willing to understand that right mm-hmm. like for, an, for an example um I, I had a client last year where we spoke about grievance most companies give oh well, the majority of the companies give grievance three-day grievance right when someone dies in your family let it be a spouse a family member like a parent or a mm-hmm. child Three days, it's not enough to get over a grief. Right. What if, you know, flights are expensive, right? What mm-hmm. if you're working out of state? Flights are expensive to fly back or even to drive back. Can you imagine the stress of driving back when you, when you have received the news that your parent has passed away? Right. Or your sibling has passed away. The stress level does not allow you to concentrate. What if you get into a car accident when you're driving to a funeral? Right. Those are all the facets that we need to become aware and make visible to, because these are all invisible things. Invisible mm-hmm. things as, as in, it's not like people do not know about it. People know about it, but they choose. They choose to put on their blinders. Yeah. When we approach things from a systemic point of view, right? How mm-hmm. a human exists from a systemic point of view, then you will understand what performance is, what production right. is, productivity is. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the solutions that I've brought to some of my clients. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, you know, like when you're, especially when you said as an example, if somebody dies, you know, um, mm-hmm. I've had bosses tell me, you could take as much time as you need, but we're, we're not paying you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, um, that's fine. I mean, at that point in time, you're going to agree to whatever, right? Because you're in such grief or stress, right? And mm-hmm. um, I understand that, but I guess there's, like you were saying, is okay, what, what, what can we do to improve upon that for that person that needs to leave or can't fulfill their obligations at work? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because with stress, right? With stress, and and I wrote an article 
recently about working from home is not the same as working remotely. Right. right? This COVID pandemic has pushed all of us, or right. majority of companies, to <laughs> adopt work from home. So right. We need to rethink what working from home is during a pandemic and during a personal crisis. Personal crisis, like when your child is sick, or when yeah. you're when you have a disabled parent, a disabled child, a disabled spouse, when someone passes away, a lot of managers say, you know, take as much time as you can, just like what your managers taught you. Right. Work from home, but the but still they are functioning from a very capitalistic mindset. Work yeah. from home. I still want the work to be done. I'm still paying you. I still want the money in. But when someone is going through a personal crisis. Mm-hmm. they are not in the right state of mind to work from home, right? right. It's, it's like the, the pandemic has clearly revealed that a lot of people are undergoing anxiety, depression, working from home, trying to juggle work, and then homeschooling kids. They are putting on extra jobs, on, right? Being the right. hat, putting on the hat as a teacher, putting on the hat as a child, a child caregiver, putting on the hat as a chef, creating meals for the kids. If... If they have a disabled parent, disabled child, putting on the hat as a caregiver, right? Mm-hmm. As, as, a, uh, as um, organizing medications and everything for them. So when the pandemic has clearly brought up what kind of crisis someone goes through, it has definitely made us think about, rethink about what a person goes through during a personal crisis, right? right? So. That's why we really need to break down, dismantle the systemic point of view as to how one belongs. How can we enable someone in our organization and not put on the uh, in a product, a performance and production uh, statistics and data and you know say, hey, you're not performing, you're out of the door. Right. Because people, are, people are not dispensable. So coming, I focus on very heart-centric which is hardship I call it hardship right. and that's the pillar of really valuing a human from the core if we displace them by saying you're not performing we are taking away their paycheck we mm-hmm. are enabling we become responsible for making them homeless for making them just dis- becoming displaced in society mm-hmm. so there are always repercussions everything is a domino effect right mm-hmm. to survive you need a job Right. How do you find a job? How do you survive out of a job? So we mm-hmm. really need to rethink the whole paradigm of how humans exist, how jobs exist, what are social responsibilities? Right, right. There's so many responsibilities in that, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can you share some um, kind of services that you provide your clients um, that you, you offer? Absolutely. So I I do uh, three things. I I I host workshops and training mm-hmm. for C level management uh, for leadership teams for for middle management as well on how 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 to lead right how to lead from the heart. So I call it hardship right. workshops and training and on diversity as well. And of course, I always encourage clients to to partner up with me. I offer success partnerships. Success partnerships is is ideal where if you truly need help with diversity or mm-hmm. leadership, that that's the part that I often recommend. It is a six month to one month success partnership where I go in and help organizations analyze the climate and create strategies. Right. And help execute the strategies. Right. And then I do speaking events as well, speak on different topics. Right. Uh, if they want <clears throat> to train their HR teams, their L&D teams, or their diversity tra- teams, or different HR teams right. under the umbrella of diversity and people. Mm-hmm. So those are the three things that I offer, workshops, training, speaking, and then success partnerships. Right, right. I like what you call it, success partnerships. It has a nice ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I took- <laughs> What's that? Because I truly, I truly believe in in partnering up with someone where their success is focused and success. And let me mm-hmm. define what success is. A lot of people think success is about 
this is what we need to do. This is X amount of money that we need to do. Success is also about, you know, if if we hit failure within the month, we need to re relook, rethink, recalibrate, right, as to what went wrong. Right. How can we take that and then re-strategize, re-agile, re-strategize mm -hmm. and say, okay, let's try plan B. It's not just plan A. We need to have plan A, B, C, D, E, all the way to plan Z. Right. Because I look at strategies and being successful in the form of a science experiment. Mm -hmm. That's my engineering background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because as an engineer, I was a chemical engineer. During chemical engineering, we were taught how to do multiple experiments. Mm -hmm. right? From every experiment, if the experiment is not favorable if it failed. We were taught not to look at it as a failure. We were, we were taught to look at it as what were the variables which were not mm -hmm. favorable to it. And then we will recalculate, recalibrate, and then we will do more experiments to a point where we would get the expected or wanted outcome. So that's exactly how I look at organizations too. Success right. is not Success is not linear. That it's exactly like our heartbeat. It's up right. and down, up and down. You need to find the right variables to make it become more conducive. And that's not the end. You need to constantly evolve. Right. So that's why I call it success partnership. Yeah, because it's a constant ongoing diagnosis, if you will, of what's working, right. what's not working. And right. like you were saying it has ups and downs, right? So you might be, oh, this really works here, but didn't work over here. Why? You know, so there's, you have right. lots, of lots of variables in there, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if somebody wanted to work with you, um, Mila, where would, how would they get a hold of you? Sure. So they can uh, contact me directly via my email, connect at milodishon.com. Or find me on LinkedIn, Mila Dishon, spelled as M O L A D E C H A N T. Mm -hmm. Or find me on Twitter. I host a live Twitter shows talking about different facets of culture. Oh, really? And yeah. I host live shows as well. Um, I interview people to engage in, in a dismantling discrimination, to building sustainable culture, and really. Uh, bringing important conversations to how do we look at sustainability and scalability and evolution from a diverse perspective. Yeah. You, so those you, are the three. Yeah. Because I was going to say you have your podcast too. So. Yeah. yeah. I do have my podcast <laughs> called Hot Ship. Hot Ship. So now I'm leading it. Is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so cool. So anyway, plus um, if you want to get a hold of Mila, she'll be on her own page at uh, podcasts dot hard at work online dot org as you know and then um it'll be also on um anchor under impactful legacy so there's an audio file and a video file so for those who would like to multitask you can listen to her and still do your own gig because i find with videos you really got to pay attention otherwise you miss something <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So anyway, but thank you for joining me today, Mia. I really appreciate uh, your wisdom and your words and um, your really your story, your, your uniqueness of your story. And I don't think it's that unique, but not that because everybody has such a really good story to tell. And but they, you are very unique in your own little way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Marilyn. Okay. And as my final say would be, be kind to each other because that's all we got. Okay, take care. Thank you.